Now this is the way that I write and I'm just going to really talk you through the process of writing something. I don't know what I'm going to write yet but I'm you know I'm beginning to write and this is the process of what I'm going through. So what shall I say? Well um, I'm going to come back to the question. I'm going to write a paragraph about this. How am I going to do it? Uh, so I'm going to say something like the nature of educational experience is no, no, I'm not going to say that. Maybe it's better to say educational experiences can be variable. Okay, so that's just saying everybody has a different experience of education um, and that's a problem. The factors which lead them to be so include variation in the quality of the teaching, variation in... Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm getting into a vibe now. I can keep on writing variation. I can, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying making these words on, well it's on the screen in my case, but I'm, I'm enjoying sort of how this feels and looks, it's kind of flowing, so I'm talking about all the different kinds of variation, variation in the ability of peers, what other kinds of variation can I think of, but it doesn't matter, I'll just leave that. And okay, so we've got another question now, so now I've got another question, I've got more to write. How can we deal with the variation problem? Uh, variations can be addressed through increased standardization. Yes, okay, so I, know I can now get a feel, okay, so we've gone from why is education rubbish to the problem of variation, dealing with variation through standardization. So what are the kind of standardizations might I be interested in? Well, I can list these types of resources, streaming of children and different abilities. Um, it's kind of standardizing the input. Um, standard practices for addressing learner development, and maybe behavior okay so I've got I've got the, the paragraph is kind of building up out of these lists um, many of these issues are addressed through um, initiatives around educational quality that's what we need to say yes now so this is this about quality this whole question about why is education rubbish is is all about quality um, and quality interventions in many countries. Okay, let's talk about that because we can list those. Resulted in inspection regimes, tracking the quality of record keeping, standardizing assessments against a variety of uh, learning outcomes. You know, learning outcomes are very important for quality. Um, regular testing in national league tables um, for the relative comparison of the effectiveness of teaching and learning. Okay, so, so something's beginning to shape up here. Um, but we have here all these things, but education is still usually rubbish. Okay, so that, that may be a feel for this problem, because we're doing all of these things. We're doing all of this quality measurement and measuring this and measuring that, but it's still not very good. Why not? Would it, it feels, is it more rubbish than it would have been without these processes? That's, that's the question. What's the problem? Okay, I'm losing my way here a bit now because I'm kind of realizing it was quite complicated. So my paragraph is, but the nature of the interventions taken in the name of quality are interventions to constrain the practice or constrain practices. They're constraining the practice of teachers. To some extent, they're constraining the practice of learners. And then a new question, is that the only way to do this? Is that the only way to um, raise the quality of experience. Is there a way of improving quality by m removing constraints on teachers? Is education rubbish because we don't trust teachers? Okay, so I've got that text and now I'm going to type it up. So this is me using the word processor literally to, um, to transcribe. Transcribe what are, is effectively a partially formed idea. So I'm, I'm going to type down um, education experience can be variable. The factors that lead it to be so include the quality in uh, so variation in, what does that say? Variation in the quality of teaching, variation of resources, variation in the classroom. Um, how might we deal with variation? Is variation the problem? Variation can be addressed through increased standardization. Um, standardization of recourse, uh, resources, streaming of children, and so on. Um, 
and many of these issues are addressed. I'm not thinking here as I'm doing this, I'm literally copying down what I've written on paper because I know that something of what I've written on paper will make a, a more polished paragraph. I know that this paragraph that is coming out right now is not terribly polished and what I now need to do is get it into the word processor and start moving bits around so that I can make it much, much tighter in the way that it expresses what I want to say. So I've got down to, but we have all these things, but education is still usually rubbish. Indeed, it feels it's more, um, more rubbish than it would have been without these processes. What's the problem? I think there's a little bit more to come. The nature of the interventions taken in the name of quality interventions to constrain practice. So this idea of constraint, I've italicized it there because I think that's probably important. Is that the only way to do it? Is there a way of improving quality by removing constraints on teachers? Is there a way of trusting teachers more? Okay, so we've got this paragraph. Um, it, it's okay, but I think it could be a lot better. And my first point of look, making it better is to look at where I end up in my last sentence. Or it may not be the last sentence, maybe the last but, but one. The nature of the interventions taken in the name of quality are interventions to constrain practice. And that gives me my first sentence now, which I feel now is what this is really about. Quality interventions in education typically constrain practice. And then we can to talk about, well, why do they constrain practice? Because they're trying to avoid problems of variation in the quality of teaching and variation in resources. And then I can say, well, what do they do? Typically, uh, measures increase standardization in various ways, colon all the different ways in which standardization can be raised. Now you can see this first paragraph now has real punch. Quality interventions in education typically constrain practice. Really? What do you mean? How does that work? Okay, uh, well they do so to avoid problems of variation in the quality of resources and teaching practice um, and these measures uh, take the form of and so on. Now I'm just going through this, reading it over and over again, thinking actually we can make this a bit tighter, we need to talk about curriculum, we, uh, I'm deleting a quite a lot of stuff because it just it doesn't need to be there anymore. So I'm looking at the second paragraph. So we are talking about constraints and issues around these constraints on practice have been well studied in the literature. Yes, because I, I know I can now start looking for the different ways in which um, people constrain practice. So I'm just thinking, what do I do with that second paragraph? And we need to, in the, the end of the first paragraph, perhaps we need to introduce it. So among the consequences of greater standardization are the ability to make national and international comparisons like the PISA studies of educational development, um, producing competition between schools for self-improvement. So, uh, just looking through this now again. However, despite these initiatives, so now this flows from the first paragraph, despite these initiatives, education experience probably needs a bit more attention. Now I'm going to change the title because I think the title is, um, I mean, we don't want to, if it's a proper academic piece of work, then you don't really want to use words like rubbish. Is there a way of improving quality by removing constraints on teachers and not increasing them? What would an education system that governed itself on this principle look like? Those are good questions. It's good to sort of end this kind of passage with, with some difficult questions. Human social organization requires some kind of standardization and agreement between practitioners. So we're not saying that you, you, you shouldn't have standardization. But perhaps we should be more scientific in our approach to understanding the things that we really are measuring. Um, So we'll look through that and just, just make a few more changes here. Yeah, so this is a more general paragraph now. So human social organization, including the organization of education, requires some kind of standardization. That goes to the front. So again, I've, I've taken the last sentence and stuck it at the beginning of the paragraph. However, the level of scientific understanding of learning experiences and the capacity to monitor that experience is fairly crude. Now let's change the title. Constraints in educational quality, some fundamental questions. That's good enough. Okay, so um, 
Right, that's the process. That's my writing process and I'm still fiddling with it, but you get the idea. So it's, it's literally from working on paper, just jotting ideas down, transcribing them into the word process, and then having these techniques like taking the last sentence of a paragraph and stitching it in the front um, to see if that, that gives, gives the argument more punch and gives the whole thing more momentum. Okay, so I hope uh, you enjoy doing this. I'm sure you'll find it difficult. Um, I find it difficult, but I also quite enjoy the challenge.